Good morning and welcome to the video for Monday, May the 11th for fifth grade. This is going to be working on a new lesson working with finding the volume of rectangles. So to start with, you are going to notice that I don't have the first page here. And the reason why I don't is I don't really have a way to do that particular example. So what they did was they had a little box and if I were to try to represent that, it would kind of look like this and then they want us to fill up until we have blocks going all the way up to the top, which would give us our final side of a rectangular prism. So um, in that example, it looked like they were putting five um, blocks going one direction and four blocks going another direction, possibly five, but it isn't really easy to tell and I don't have a way to represent that. But they did talk about um, using a net. So you will use this next year. So to give you an example, let's take a look at number one for the Sharon show. And I'm going to talk about what that net would look like. So, and then kind of relay it back to our starting problem. So our net is going to be a representation of if we took this rectangular prism and took it apart. So I would have a section here that would be four by three that would flatten out to the ground. I'm still gonna have my bottom, which is gonna match the top, which would be four by four. My left and right sides would go out and then my top, um, my bottom would already be down here. The top section would fold out and that would be right here. So next year when we use this strategy, we will use it mostly to find the surface area of different things. But if we were to fold this back up, so this section, this section, this section, and this section would all meet up at the top, and this part would not be here, then we would sit there and fill it with cubes. That's kind of what they wanted us to do for the unlock the problem. I just don't have a good way to represent that. So moving forward, what we are working with um, is going to be the length or base times the width times the height. And so we are going to be multiplying three numbers together to get our volume. And so to start with, we can do four times four to get 16, 16 times three, or you could do it this way as well. Uh, again, all of this, because we are multiplying all three numbers together, our um, kind of associative property of multiplication tells us that we can kind of change the way that we group the numbers together as long as we are multiplying the same numbers and still get the same answer. So you could also do four times three to get 12, 12 times four to get our answer, which would be 48. Uh, so this is kind of the idea of what we're working with. I'm gonna move a little bit quicker. If you want to go ahead and pause the video so that you can work through uh, number two through number six. Um, again, Risen Christ students, we're going to do 1, 3, and 5 that are assigned for you, but I am going to talk through all of them. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to, and uh, when you're ready, go ahead and hit play, and we'll go ahead and talk through the answers. So for number 2, uh, we can either do uh, 4 times 2 to get 8, 8 times 3 to get 24, or we could do 3 times 2 to get 6, and then uh, multiply that times 4 to get 24. So that would be 24 cubic inches. And again, they drew the line. We want to make sure that we are using whatever measurement. Uh, again, this is kind of the time that we really should expect that every time that you give an answer, if we're working with a unit, that you give the unit. And so this is just kind of a reminder about that particular thing. So we can do uh, six out of this. So three times two gives us six. Six times six gives us 36. Now the way that it's organized would be six times two. And then we have three rows of that. So if you want to look at it that way, if that helps you, uh, we can do that. Because really, we probably should be able to find the volume just by counting the number of blocks on the top and then multiplying that by the number of rows, even if they don't give us the numbers to work with. Um, so just a thought as we're moving forward. So 5 times 4 gives us 20, times 3 gives us 60 for this one. For number five, we have two different things that are going to end up having the same um, total area or volume, excuse me, uh, volume. And so eight times two gives us 16, four times four gives us 16, and both of those times two would give us 32 cubic inches. So 32 cubic inches is equal to 32 cubic inches. 
Number uh, six, this one's a little bit more complicated um, because we will end up having to use a, a little bit more uh, multiplication. So 36 times three would give us our answer for this and that's gonna be 108. And then eight times five is going to give us 40. 40 times two gives us 80. And so our left-hand side should be larger. So for the homework, we're already uh, to that point that we can talk about that. Again, we can just use length times width times height, or you could also refer to it as the base times the width times the height, um, which we will use the word base um, in place of length as we uh, move forward into sixth grade. So um, our base times the width times the height um, or you could say length. That's kind of the old school way that I learned how to do it uh, many, many years ago. Uh, so that is going to cover everything that we're working with uh, for number two through number five. <clears throat> number six, if we are going to have an edge of four inches, then that is going to inform the size of our box. We're going to have a square that's four by four. That's going to tell us how many um, what the, or what the size of that box is going to be as far as uh, the area. If we put 12 of those boxes in a carton and completely fill the carton, then that will let us know how we can do that. So in, for instance, if we are going to make a rectangle out of boxes that are four by four, imagine how you could possibly do that. Uh, and that can give you an example of how we would do that. So we could go ahead and let's say 12 of those boxes, we could do four by three. And so you're gonna use these measurements to help you figure that out. And the height as well is going to be four. So we're gonna have a four by four by four, um, kind of a cube for the boxes uh, that we're starting with and then we are making 12 of those. So you could kind of figure out how you want to do that, but that should give us all the numbers that we're working with. So this is again for one of these guys and we're using 12 of those. So our height's gonna be four and then figure out the uh, rest from there. <clears throat> Number seven, um, again, uh, Risen Christ students, you're doing two, four, six. So I wanted to make sure to spend some extra time on number six. Number seven, we can go ahead and use uh, these numbers here to multiply. Just understand that one person is using uh, the unit cubes as one inch size and the other person is using uh, unit cubes that would be one centimeter size. So we are going to have the same answer as far as what the volume is going to be. It's going to be the measure of our unit that is going to change as we do that. Uh, for number six, you can kind of take a look and see how many different blocks we are working with here. Again, I suggested that you could count one row, or sorry, one um, kind of layer of area cubes to figure out how many cubes we're working with. Think about how many of those time uh, layers you would need to get up to 48. And then for number two, you can multiply. Uh, for number three, this one should be pretty simple. We're looking at the shape, which section of this is five-sided for our pentagon. Uh, for number four, our x value is always going to come first, so you, you are always going to want it to write an ordered pair that looks starting like this, and then your value for x is going to go here, value for y is going to go here. Uh, the least number of acute angles that a triangle can have, think about that. Um, you can, we have different versions of triangles, so you can have a right triangle that would have this, we could have an obtuse triangle, and we could have an acute triangle. So think about what the smallest number of acute angles we could have for that. And then for our last one, we are converting pounds to ounces. There are eight, um, excuse me, I did it again. That's fluid ounces, 16 times three. Uh, so 16 um, ounces when we're talking about weight, eight ounces when we are talking about volume or capacity. So. Uh, those are the uh, homework problems that go with the lesson for today. If you have any questions, I think I explained all of them well enough that you should be able to uh, 
do that without having to refer back to anything. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me or your classroom teacher if you're finding this video in another way. Um, the homework answers will be out on Tuesday morning as and uh, for my class, for fifth grade, you guys will have a new lesson coming up on Wednesday, I believe. So lesson 11.7 will be on Wednesday. So hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.